Hello, and welcome to Virtual Tech Classes with Houston Public Library. My name is Jasmine, and today I'll be guiding you through computer basics and all it entails. Computer basics allow you to become more familiar with your computer, as well as understand the various features and functions of your personal computer. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to discuss basic computer technology terms, review basic keyboard and mouse functions, learn about popular operating systems, understand the basics of how to protect your computer. Before we go over some computer technology terms, you first need to understand that it is difficult to break a computer. Computers are designed to recover from most things a user does, and this may be done with just a few clicks of the mouse or the keyboard. Most problems you encounter can be solved by restarting your computer. Let's take a closer look at some terms you'll need to know for this class. Let's look into the two terms, hardware and software. Hardware is any part of your computer that has a physical structure, such as the computer monitor or keyboard. Software is any set of instructions or coding that tells the hardware what to do. Software guides the hardware and tells it how to accomplish each task. Examples of software are web browsers or the internet, computer games, or Microsoft applications like Word or Excel. Here are examples of the different types of computers and their hardware. Tablet, laptop, these are the parts of a desktop PC or personal computer, CPU tower, monitor, keyboard, mouse. A laptop and tablet are self-contained hardware with internal mouse and keyboard mechanisms, but this monitor, keyboard, and mouse are all hardware associated with a personal computer. Moving on to computer accessories, these objects enhance your computer usage and provide additional capability to the computer. While these objects are highly used, they are not required when using your computer. Your computer will still work without these objects. Headphones or earbuds are used to hear sound coming out of your computer, such as when you are playing a video or listening to music. USB drives, also known as flash drive or a thumb drive, are used to store and save files. Large external hard drives have the same feature and purpose, but with more space or memory. Now let's look into the components of a computer keyboard. We're not going to go too much in detail as most of this has been covered in our basic mouse and keyboarding course. Just to review, this device is used to input characters and functions into the computer by pressing buttons or keys. Today, we'll be focusing on the function keys. They have special functions defined by the operating system or a running program. We're going to discuss some of the common functions of these keys for Windows and iOS, but remember not all programs support these function keys. Also, the function keys on your keyboard may perform different tasks than what we're going over today. F1 is used to open a help screen in just about every program. When pressing this key, the F2, you can rename a highlighted icon, file, or folder on your Windows desktop. We will be discussing icons, files, and folders in the next section. F3 is commonly used in Microsoft Word when trying to change the text in a document. Pressing Ctrl and the F3 keys together will change any highlighted text to lowercase in Word. When you press Shift and F3 keys together, this changes the text in Microsoft Word from upper to lowercase or a capital letter at the beginning of every word. Try it out for yourself to see the difference. The F5 key refreshes or reloads the page with an internet browser. The F6 key moves your cursor to the address bar in internet browsers such as Explorer and Google Chrome. The F7 key is used when wanting to spell check and grammar check a document in a Microsoft programs such as Microsoft Word. The F11 button lets you enter and exit full screen mode in all internet browsers. Last but not least, we have the F12 button. This key has multiple functions in Microsoft Word. By pressing F12, you can open the Save As window in Microsoft Word. Pressing Ctrl and the F12 keys together allows you to open a document in Microsoft Word. You can even print a document in Word by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and the F12 keys at the same time. I know you may be wondering why I skipped over some of the function keys. 
and that is because the ones we went over today are more commonly used. When you have some time, try some of these function keys out for yourself. Another very important device for your computer is the mouse, which is used as a virtual finger for pointing, selecting, and moving items on your computer. Check out our basic mouse and keyboarding class to learn more details on the mouse and its functions. Moving on to operating systems, or OS. The two most popular operating systems are iOS for Apple products and Windows. These are the systems that run your computer. In detail, an operating system is software that communicates with the hardware and allows other programs to run. It is comprised of system software or the fundamental files your computer needs to boot up and function. Every desktop computer, tablet, and smartphone has an operating system that provides basic functionality for the device. For today's class, we will only be going over some basic features of Windows Desktop. This is the computer's desktop. The desktop is the working area of a computer screen which includes a background or wallpaper and icons of files or folders saved on the desktop. When you first turn on a computer, after the booting process, the desktop is the first thing you see. These are called desktop icons or graphical icons of files, folders, and programs and or software saved on the computer. Clicking on an icon gives you an easier access to open a file or program or to open a folder with files inside. You can create an icon or shortcut by right-clicking your mouse in a blank space on your desktop, move your cursor to New, and select either a new folder or shortcut. If you chose a shortcut, you would be prompted to browse for the location of the file or program you would want to create a shortcut for. When creating folders, you can make your desktop neat by placing various files in that folder. For example, if you have saved a lot of recipe files on your desktop, you can move these files to a new folder and name this folder New Recipes. You do this by holding the control key and click each desired file with your mouse. You then drag these files into the new folder. This will clear some space on your desktop and make finding files a lot easier. Other features of the desktop include the Start button, which opens a directory of a computer software programs and other files. The taskbar is a narrow strip of icons at the bottom of the screen that shows you which program windows are currently open or saved to the taskbar for easy access. The taskbar also allows you to control functions such as the start button and the notification icons. The notification icons located at the bottom right corner of the taskbar displays the programs running in the background and information such as the time and date, notifications, internet connection status, and the current volume level. The last topic for today is how to protect your computer. It is much easier for your computer to get a virus than it is for you to break it. Here are some tips to safeguard your computer from viruses and threats. Install antivirus and antispiral programs from a trusted source. Antivirus software is a type of program used for scanning and removing viruses from your computer. While many types of antivirus programs exist, their primary purpose is to protect computers from viruses and remove any viruses that are found. Norton and McAfee are both good antivirus software you can use, but for a fee. Anti-spyware is a type of software that is designed to detect and remove unwanted spyware programs. Spyware is a type of malware that is installed on a computer without the user's knowledge in order to collect information about them. This can pose a security risk to the user, but more frequently spyware degrades system performance by taking up processing power, installing additional software, or redirecting users' browser activity. Also, make sure you update your computer regularly. Most computer software will automatically update on its own during the booting phase once you turn on your computer or right before you shut down your computer. There are many companies advertising on the internet that they offer free protection for PCs. Do plenty of research before downloading any type of software. Be wary of companies promising protection for free. Also, check out our email basics class to learn more ways on how to protect your computer from the dangers of the digital world. This concludes our computer basics course. If you're interested in learning more, check out our full list of classes. If you're looking to expand your learning with more advanced courses, you can access lynda.com with your MyLink card for free. Use your MyLink card number and PIN to log in and start learning today. If you need help getting started or looking for more information about your MyLink card, call 832-393-1313 to speak with one of our friendly and knowledgeable librarians today.